This year I've been using a converted lawn tractor to help with the forestry work at Century Wood. But last month I had a problem with the tractor not starting, and this video talks a bit about the problem itself, what I did to fix it, some footage of it running and checking the tuning with an RPM meter, and also some modifications I made to the car trailer I used to bring firewood home from the wood. The problem with the tractor started with it losing power and almost stalling. For the last minute or so while the engine was running I could only keep it going by closing the choke and then eventually it, would run, it wouldn't run or start at all. There was plenty of petrol in the tank and the fuel line was okay so the next thing to look at was the carburetor. I took the tractor home and took the carb off to have a closer look. The carb itself is the complicated bit in the middle with fuel and air pipes coming out of it. Here is the carb on the left with the aluminium fuel bowl removed and put on the right. This fills up with petrol. The black dot in the middle was the problem. It's the end of a plunger worked by an electronic solenoid underneath the bowl, but it was covered in black gunk and jammed. I could probably have just cleaned it and put it back together, but instead I bought a new carb kit which included a new fuel line, fuel filter, clamps, rubber gaskets and both air filters for £20. Some of the carb components wear out and I almost got a new one last winter as part of my original overhaul of the tractor. I reused the ducts for the air and the petrol air mixture, but gave them a wash with soap and water. So this is the new carburetor installed. That's its solenoids that are jammed on the old one new fuel line and filter, the old fuel line, rubber fuel line had started to perish. Remember this white sticker on the black circle of mesh inside the red engine cover? The mesh protects the engine cooling fan and it's attached to the main drive shaft of the engine. Start it up. So that, now that sticker on the black mesh is going round and round. Because of the strobe effect of the camera it looks a lot slower than it really is. I got this laser tachometer online for £11. Let's use it to measure how fast the white sticker is going round. Sixteen hundred revolutions per minute with the throttle as low as it will go. I tuned it at home. If I tune it to run any slower then the engine stalls. Now full throttle, fast as the engine will go. just over 3,000 rpm. The engine is rated at 2,500 rpm, so that seems like a good range to have. Let's put the throttle back down again and re-measure the rpm. the same again. With this kind of tractor you want minimum throttle to be as low as possible. Since you can't change gear while you're moving you have to set the gear while stationary with the combined brake and clutch engaged and then set off. So if you start in fifth gear and the throttle is too fierce you do a wheelie or you even flip the tractor over. Once you get going though then you can whack the throttle back up. Another look at the carburetor, fuel line and filter. You can see here the screw you use to adjust the minimum setting of the throttle so it runs as lean as possible but without stalling. Ok, next thing. On the right here you can see the bottom end of the drive shaft. It has two pulley wheels, one at the top for the drive belt which takes power to the gearbox and the back axle, and a bigger one at the bottom 
which powered the original mowing deck, which I no longer have. The problem is that the bottom wheel reduces the ground clearance and exposes the drive shaft of the engine to impacts from below. So I decided to cut it down while I had the tractor at home. This is what a brand new one looks like, and they're not that expensive if I decide to reverse the cut. I did originally think about using that big pulley wheel to power machinery, and I could imagine I might do that again one day. I took the pulley wheels unit off and cut it down to size with a mains powered angle grinder. To be able to get the angle grinder right in, I had to butcher the bigger wheel like this to get it out of the way. In the foreground is the original long bolt that held the pulley wheels onto the drive shaft, and then shorter 7 sixteenths of an inch UNF bolts which I had to order online. You can't readily get imperial sized bolts in the UK as we've gone over to metric. I noticed this with, with um, spanners too with a tractor. I, I use adjustable spanners a lot more than normal since I only have metric ones otherwise. This shows the end of the pulley wheel with one of those bolts, the original sprung washer and a new penny washer to close the tube end off. On the right you can see the end of the steel skid plate which I added to protect the drive belt. I might make a longer skid plate now to cover the pulley wheel too, now that it's shorter. Now some pictures of the repaired tractor in use. This plantation poplar tree is on the north ride and has grown really awkwardly due to the disease which attacks their forks. I'm gradually removing um, the poplars to favour native trees starting with bad specimens like this. Here's the same tree on the ground, and then with some of the rounds in the trailer to be pulled to the barn by the tractor and stacked dry. Finally, here's some modifications I made to the car trailer. I added this jockey wheel when I bought it last year. This means you can stand the trailer horizontally while you load it up. The center of gravity is over the big road wheels, as you would hope. However, if the trailer tips backwards at all, the load can start to slip and then the trailer trips backward completely and it all falls backwards. In particular, this means you can't move it around once it's loaded up, which means keeping it hitched to the car to be safe if it's got like a heavy load like the tractor itself or lots of firewood. I've solved this problem now by getting two more jockey wheels and clamps. They're on sale in various places this time of year because of the camping seasons is, is, is almost finished. I put clamps on each back corner of the, of the trailer so you can add a jockey wheel. The only issue is that you can't turn the handle on the jockey wheel to extend it once that it's attached. But it's easy to loosen the clamp to allow the whole jockey wheel unit to be removed or moved up and down. I used, I've used this setup already, filling the trailer with firewood and then pulling it to the back of the car to take home. I covered the firewood with a tarpaulin to keep the predicted rain off and, and they put this new cargo net over the top to hold it all down and that worked really well. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to see more videos about managing the wood, staying in the off-grid log cabin, producing firewood and using the tractor.